This presentation will be about delivering your speech and why your delivery is so important. First, we'll start with methods of delivery. For an effective delivery, you want to be as natural as you can possibly be. You'll also want to show enthusiasm because that will translate to your audience and they'll be excited as well. It's very important to show that you are confident about what you are speaking about. And also you will want to engage with your audience members because that makes them feel as if they are part of your presentation. There are four general methods of delivery. The first is speaking from a manuscript. Next is memory. The third is impromptu speech. And fourth is extemporaneous speaking. And this is the method that is preferred by most public speakers. First, manuscript. That's basically reading a speech word for word. The problem with this is that it restricts your eye contact and it also restricts your body movement because a lot of times you're holding a document that you're looking at and instead of looking at the audience, you're looking at a piece of paper. In addition to that, it may limit your expressiveness as far as your voice is concerned. It also unfortunately can be monotonous and boring. So you'll wanna stay away from manuscript as much as possible. Next is memory. It used to be known as oratory. Basically, this is where you memorize a speech word for word. It's hardly used in the United States any longer, and it's very difficult for the speaker to have real eye contact with the audience because the speaker is concentrating on trying to remember what the speech is about. Now, the problem with this is that if you have a mental lapse and if you forget where you are in that presentation, sometimes people just freeze and it's very awkward. And the whole time the speaker is trying to remember what was I trying to say. So it's important that you try to stay away from memory as well. Memory can be appropriate for toasts and introductions and smaller speeches, very quick speeches that you don't have to have a lot to say. Impromptu is unpracticed or improvised speech. And a lot of times people just get up and they just start talking. Some people can do this very well. Other people, not so well. So it's you need to be careful if you decide that you want to do impromptu speaking. And you also need to try to prepare some remarks before you actually get up and speak so that you can be somewhat prepared for your presentation. Extemporaneous. Most of the speeches and public speeches are delivered this way. And it's where speakers prepare for their presentation well in advance of when they will actually have to speak. Generally, it's done from an outline and it also helps you. When you do your outline, you are really remembering what you're putting down. So when you're ready to speak, that will already be within your memory. Now this method will help you a lot. It will help you to adapt to your particular situation. Now, while it's possible that you may still have a few memory lapses, if you practice frequently using your outline, you'll be just fine. Because even if you forget the exact wording, you will remember the general thought. Next, we'll talk about your voice and delivery and why it's so important. Your voice and delivery is extremely important. One thing you'll want to be aware of is your volume, and that involves how loud a speaker is. Now, some people are really, really loud, and that can be annoying. Additionally, others can be very soft, and so you have to strain so that you can hear the presenter. So you'll want to make sure that you have a nice volume 
when you are making your presentation. You don't want to be so loud until your audience feels as if you're yelling at them, but you don't want to be so soft until they're having to strain to try to hear what you're saying because you can lose your audience either way. Another thing that you'll want to think about is your pitch. And that involves the range of sounds from high to low. Some people have very high pitches, which can be very annoying. And then others can have very low pitches. So be aware of the pitch in your voice and try to make it a medium pitch because it really, the, the more medium it is, the better it is for your audience. Your intonation, that's the rising and the falling of your vocal pitch. And it's something that you can work on. You can say a word several different times, several different ways, but it conveys different meanings each time that you say it. So you want to vary your, your pitch to avoid monotony. If you've ever had a presentation where someone spoke in the same tone the entire time of the presentation, it's very boring and very painful. So be careful that you don't fall into that rut of speaking the same tone all the time. You will want to go up some and go down some as well. Your speaking rate is the pace at which you convey speech, and that's normally 120 to 150 words per minute. You need to pay attention to your audience reactions. If you're speaking too slowly, that will bore your listener. So if it feels like people are starting to go to sleep, maybe you need to kick it up a little. If you're speaking too fast, it can be confusing and difficult for your audience to follow you. And a lot of times when people get nervous, they start speaking faster. So what you'll want to do is practice your presentation speaking at a normal pace. And if you feel yourself starting to get nervous, just calm down and keep it at a normal pace. Your audience will appreciate you for it. Pausing will enhance your presentation. And this is what we call strategic pausing. It's when you stop after saying something or before saying something, because it emphasizes a point and it draws attention to a thought that you want to convey. This also will allow your listeners a chance to think about whatever point that you're trying to express. Keep in mind that both speakers and listeners need pauses during your presentation. Pronunciation and articulation is extremely important. Pronunciation is the correct formulation of the way that a word sounds. Articulation is speaking clearly, so it's clarity with which sounds are made. If you pronounce a word incorrectly, or if you are not articulate, it will distract your audience. So please be careful when you're speaking, be mindful of what you're saying, and pronounce it correctly, and also articulate it correctly as well. Your body and delivery is extremely important because it says a lot about who you are as a presenter. Body language includes a lot of things. Your facial expressions, your eyes, your gestures, your general body movements. It's always important to be aware of the body language that you are speaking. Smiling is something that we all generally like. It's a mutual sign of respect, welcome, goodwill, and comfort. And a lot of times, if you just smile, it causes people to relax. And it also improves your self-confidence. Eye contact is extremely important when making presentations because it lets your audience know that you're paying attention to them. 
It acknowledges them. You let them know that they are part of your presentation. There are so many times when people will only look on one side of the room instead of addressing their entire audience. So it's very important for you as a speaker to acknowledge both sides of the room because it indicates acknowledgement as well as respect. And it shows that you are paying attention to them and therefore they in turn will pay attention to you as well. Gestures are very important because a lot of times they help you with your presentation. Gestures help to fill in the gaps in your message. They illustrate things for you. A lot of times when people are gesturing, it shows the depth of emotion that you have about a particular subject. And it should come from real emotions. You should be genuine when you use your gestures. They also should be reflective of who you are as a person. Be careful of overusing gestures. And a lot of times people will do things when they're nervous. Don't do that. Make sure that when you use your gestures, you have a point that you want to make. Nonverbal immediacy. This happens when you're in the room with a group of other people. You will be able to pick up on their nonverbal cues. They also will be able to pick up on yours as well. So, a lot of times, if done effectively, your listeners will respond positively with your nonverbal communication that you have for them. For instance, with your eye contact, with your gestures, things like that will make a connection with your audience and they will have more of a vested interest in your presentation. Your dress is extremely important because attire is the very first thing that people will notice about you. So it's important that you are dressed appropriately and of course, you're going to be the center of attraction, which many people don't like, and to have all eyes on you can be an, an unnerving thing. But if you're dressed properly, that can also add confidence to you, and it can also help you with your presentation as well. Also, make sure that you're dressed appropriately for the right occasion. Practice is something that you have to do all the time in order to become a more effective public speaker. The more you practice, the more comfortable you, you will become as a public speaker. You'll focus on your message, you'll plan in advance, and you will just practice, practice, practice. And as you go along, you will focus on your ideas and different wording will come into play. Something else that is very important, you need to time each part of your speech because remember, all of the parts need to be equal. Your introduction is where you grab them. The body of the presentation is where you keep them. The conclusion is where you just blow them away. I can't wait to hear your presentations.